Welcome to Stories of Art. My name is Kamel Heidekoper and today we're doing something different. I'm in a museum and it's, well, my favorite museum in the entire world. It's Museum Speeltlok in Utrecht, um, in the Netherlands. It's a museum for automated musical instruments. And those are musical instruments that can play all by themselves. Now, I know that's a little bit different from what I usually do in, a, in an art channel, but trust me, they're really interesting. Um, for full disclosure, uh, I am not paid by this museum to do this. Uh, I'm actually very happy that they've allowed me to film here. And one of the reasons that it's uh, my favorite museum is because of the collection, of course. And another is that I've, I used to work here. I've worked here for a long time. I started in my first year of university as a, as a tour guide here. And uh, they have tours here all the time, continuously, because these instruments have to be demonstrated. You have to be, uh, they have to be played, otherwise they're just well, boxes. Um, and um, I stayed on here and became, eventually became a curator until I um, started to do different things. But even though I left quite a while ago, uh, this is still a place that is really close to my heart. I really like this, this collection because it's such a cheerful thing to, to play with, to, to, to see. Now, if you're ever in the Netherlands, um, I imagine if you visit that you're going to go to Amsterdam or to the Tulips or something like that. But if you're in Amsterdam, this museum is not there. It's in a different city called Utrecht and it's only 25 minutes by train. It's a 10 minute walk from the station, so really you're, you're, you could be here within an hour from the center of Amsterdam. And coming here, I assure you, will make your trip that much more memorable. Now, having said all of that, we're going to have a look at a specific type of instrument, and I'm going to tell you something about the history of that, and that's the player piano. Now, let's have a closer look at one of those. So, now I'm sitting next to a player piano. It's a piano that you can play normally. It's a regular piano. It has the strings in the back. It has all the piano mechanism in the back there. But it has a whole lot more. This, in this case, it's, it's opened up so you can see this mechanism here. Um, these were developed, well, actually, as the piano was being developed in the 19th century, these were the automated versions of it were um, developed as well. But the first real commercial success formula for this one, for a player, an actual player piano, was an invention of 1896. And from that time on, they were made in all kinds of shapes and sizes and became extraordinarily popular. The first ones, however, didn't look anything like this one. This is one of those very early models. It's a player piano, but you might really call it a piano player, because this is a mechanism that was sold to people who already had a piano. So it's not a piano. What you do with this one is you clamp it onto a real piano and then, and then you play it like a player piano. Here you can see one in action, as it were. This is a detail of an advertisement of the Aeolian Company, one of the largest producers of player pianos ever. And what you see in the picture is someone sitting at a player piano that has been clamped onto a regular piano. Now, all the man has to do is push the pedals with his feet and the whole thing will work automatically. And little mechanical fingers will press down the keys on the actual piano. The whole thing is pre-programmed, although he can influence the sound a little bit with a number of levers and buttons in front of him. But I'll show you those in the uh, regular player piano. But of course you could also incorporate that mechanism inside a piano and then you get a real player piano. Now, how does this work? Um, you have here a, um, well, a keyboard that I don't really need. You, well, as I showed you, you can play it, but you don't have to. Um, you have a roll of paper that's an, a music program, basically a computer program, but for a piano. And it's going to be read by what's called a tracker bar. And a tracker bar is this, this metal bar here that has all these little holes in it. And these holes, they are basically tiny little vacuum cleaners. Um, each and every one of them has a little tube behind it that can suck air. And 
what's going to happen is I'm going to place this roll in front of it and then the paper will cover all of these little holes. Then they, they suck themselves shut. They suck the paper towards them and then it's, well, it's a little vacuum. Um, as the paper then starts to roll past them, little holes in the paper will appear. That's the program itself. It's a paper roll with, with little holes in it. And the holes come in front of one of these, these, these vacuum cleaners. And when that happens, one of them is opened up. Air is allowed to flow in and that gives a command. So the whole thing is a pneumatic system and it has to be powered by something. And in this case, it's powered the old fashioned way, which is with your feet. These pedals, they fold out and all you have to do is push them and well, the whole thing works automatically. Let me place in the roll. There's all kinds of little levers and, and things and buttons hidden in a, an instrument like this one. Look at this. Here you have a whole battery of, of little buttons that you don't really need to play this instrument, but you could use. Now, one of the cool things about this one, this is a, a roll that became very popular, a type of roll that became popular, because it also has lyrics. Um, they come by and you have to sing them at the right moment. It's really karaoke. Um, let me play a little bit, show you just how easy it is. So, now all I have to do is push these pedals and this will start to roll. Here we go. Here we go, ladies. your basic operation for an instrument like this. I have to understand that these became extraordinarily popular in the, um, in the early 20th century. Now one of the cool things about having one of these at home is that you can of course play it normally but you can also uh, play it automatically and you can change these rolls. It's very easy to just see me put one in. And these rolls were for sale at the same company that made these. Well, the Aeolian company was one of the main pro producers of these rolls. They made them by the thousands. I've once seen an, an ad of theirs that said that they had a catalog of 10,000 different rolls and claimed they made 200 more every week. And you could order them, well, you could buy them in a shop, but you could also get them by mail order. In fact, in America, what they did is a number of companies that made these these player pianos got together and decided on what format they were going to use for this uh, for this role so that you could interchange these roles from one piano to the next from the one brand to the other and there are so many roles that you can choose from they were literally made by the thousands and I was actually sitting on this stool that's a, a specific stool for player pianos because inside it if I lift a lid like this you can see there's a storage space for more rolls. Now, every new hit, every new song could become a piano roll, and you didn't actually need to buy them all the time. There were quite a few companies that would rent them out to you, pretty much like, um, like video stores used to do. Player pianos are a lot of fun, and that's why they became so very, very popular. But they do have their limitations. You see, the program, of this paper roll with holes in it for a regular player piano contains only limited information. It tells the piano what key to play 
at what time and for how long. It cannot tell it how hard to play it. And it also doesn't incorporate the use of pedals in, in the playing. So uh, a lot of the things that a piano can do, play loud and soft uh, and use pedals, are, are left out of the player piano. You could do some of those things yourself. And that's why I, I show you, you this, this bar of little levers and, and buttons where you can actually move these levers and then it starts to play its pedals as well. And you can, to a limited amount, you can make it play louder and softer in moments. So you could actually influence the music you're listening to and make it sort of your own performance. But as these instruments became so very, very popular, there was bound to be someone who came up with a superior system, a top of the line system. And that happened to be a man called Michael Delte or Mikael Delte. Um, he was German, so you would think Mikael, but he moved to the US, so Michael, well, you pick. He came up with a system of a reproduction piano called the Velte Mignon and patented it, showed it for the first time in 1904. Actually, the earliest version was this one, which is this keyboardless version. In this one, it can only play automatically. You can't play it by hand. But very soon, he started making versions where you can play a keyboard and listen to the music as well. And what's the big difference between a Velte Mignon and every other player piano is that these are reproduction pianos. And reproduction pianos, uh, the system that he came up with can record a lot more information on the paper roll with holes. They're very different paper rolls with holes as well. Because this reproduces a performance of a pianist. What happened is a pianist could go to, to Velte. They had a sort of recording piano that you could play and every movement you made would be recorded. So every key you touch, how hard you touch it, every time you use pedals, and all of that is stored on a program, on, well, again, a paper roll with holes in it, but a more complex one. And that roll would then be reproduced, and you could play it on your Velte Mignon at home. And that meant that instead of having just a melody that's being played for you, or a song being played for you, you could have a famous pianist come to your house for a private concert. It's an actual performance, an actual recording. And remember, this is the early 20th century. Phonographs, record players, they were not that good yet. This was spectacular. Now, the system was so good that even the very highest end piano builders wanted in on this. So you get pianos like this one. This is a Velte Mignon mechanism built into a Steinway grand piano. You can see that when I open it, it says Steinway Velte, and you can open more of it. And you see the, the roll. You can see it's a red roll, and that's typical for Velte. When you see a red roll, they used a different color paper simply to distinguish themselves from others. And as I said, this is going to be what I'm going to play for you is a recording of a performance of a pianist. And at the beginning of every roll, there's this label that tells you what melody is on it, what it's going to be played, and by whom. And in this case, it's Tchaikovsky. It's a Nutcracker Suite. That's what Casse Noisette means. It's the second part, and they're called the Dances Caractéristiques. You can even see the titles of the individual dances. And it's going to be played by a man who added his signature underneath, but, well, I don't know if you can make it out, but I think it's completely illegible. But it's supposed to say Eugène d'Albert. So it's going to be an actual performance of Eugène d'Albert playing the second part of the Nutcracker Suite. This particular role takes about 11 minutes. That's why this video is so long. Um, but it's really a treat, so I would advise you to put on your best headphones and um, sit back and enjoy.
brilliant, isn't it? Um, if you think so as well, give me a like. And you could, of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And when you do that, you should hit that bell icon because then you get a notification anytime I post a new video. And of course, you should come here yourself. Museum Speelklok in Utrecht. Um, which, as I said, is not Amsterdam, but from Amsterdam, it's really easy to get here. I've put a, a link to the website of this museum in the description box so you can more easily find it. And you should imagine there's tours here continuously. You, you get taken on a tour in Dutch, in English, whatever you want, and they play these instruments. So you get to hear them live, which is that much more fun. And just to give you an, in, an idea, just in the room I'm in right now. I'll turn the camera around and, and you'll see just how many spectacular instruments are right here. And all of them can play. So, really good fun to come here. And uh, you should do that. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching.